Okay, so we're starting again, guys. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about is free lead generation. And this class is different um, than a lot of ones that we teach on social media. Because generally what we're talking about is going through what should the post look like? Um, what's the best practices for times of posting? And I want to be honest, some, most of that is just, it's new point. It doesn't even matter. Because if you're not creating content and using social media to your advantage, then it doesn't matter what time of day that you're posting that. So I am here to talk about all of those things and how we're going to build it into our business plan. Because I am very obsessed with all of the models that Kelly Williams has. And so, what day is today? October 18th, maybe? 19th. Who, raise your hand if you've done business planning already. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm 27 days older. Than okay. We, we got newbies in the room, so maybe <laughs> everyone hasn't. Yet, generally, I just want to you know harp on the idea that what we do is we always do business planning in October because why? Does anybody know why? Besides Kevin in the room. New Year's, three months away. Three months. What we do now is going to affect our first quarter. So if we can start on our lead generation path right now, what I do today, it's going to be, you know, January 19th, I'm going to see some results from that. So that's why we business plan early. So even if you have a business plan, this is going to give you ideas of what to put into your business plan for this year, because, and it's really, we're going to talk about your GPS or 135, whichever one you call it, to get to your lead generation plan and how is social media going to enhance it? Because for most of us that are joining a call like this, it should not be one of your priorities. I'll just say that. It should be a strategy, but it should not be a priority for you. Because if it was your priority, you're probably already out there killing it and you're not, you're not sitting in this class here. So we're going to talk about how to weave that strategy into what you're already doing. So that's the basis of it, a little bit different. So I'm sure that there's going to be questions. I don't have a business Facebook account. Where do I do? You can contact me afterwards. I'd be happy to help you get those basics down, but this is more of also a mastermind session. So everybody that's online, I also just want to talk to you guys for a minute and say, we want everyone participating. So if you guys can share your camera, I'm looking now how many people are, you can share your camera. If you can be ready to talk, because we're also going to, you know, do a little breakout and get into groups and talk about some things. So I'm just looking at how many people we have because my activity will change based on that. Okay, so we've got down a handful of people, great. Um, so the first thing we'll jump in, free lead generation, right? It's not picking up the phone. Everyone seems to hate picking up the phone anymore. And so if that's not you, if you're not a cold caller, or if you are, and you just want another <laughs> Oh, oh he's not me. What is that? Yeah, hold on. I'm gonna. I'm going to. There we go. Okay. As long as nobody takes themselves off mute now. Um, <laughs> so we're just gonna jump in free lead generation. Background on me for two seconds. So I've been in real estate since 2006. I own multiple businesses, and I live by the models. I'm just a models girl. The Good Red Book is the best thing since sliced bread. So let's talk about why social media. So I love this quote. It's people do not, I mistyped, buy good. <laughs> Go back to, um, no. It's Lewis, Lewis. Lewis, maybe he's got his. Okay, sorry, muted again. Okay, so where was I? <laughs> um, people do not buy goods and services, they buy relations, stories, and magic. So they're not here. I always say, and this is not to be disrespectful to any real estate agents, real estate agents aren't salespeople, right? You don't usually get into real estate for sales. You get into real estate for building relationships. And just because you're, we're great at I'm just maybe a call center sales agent, does not mean you're going to do good here. 
So sales is one small aspect. And yet people who have no sales experience don't want to be construed as a salesperson thrive in real estate as well. So it's not about trying to sell people a house. You're not like literally you're taking an order. You should be a good order taker. That's for sure. It creates less work for you, but it's how are you weaving that in? So it's building those relationships, telling stories. That's where obviously social media can come in very handy and you're selling the magic. Like, how did you do all of this? How did this happen? I had such a great experience. That's the magic of real estate. So just keep that in mind that this is always about relations and telling stories. So how does social media fit into your GPS? So does anybody have ideas of, is social media on your GPS? Do you have it as a strategy? Is it a priority? Yes. Yes. So where do you have it listed at? Do you know? I don't know, um, it, but I have a 555 listed. Okay, yeah. As part of my strategies. Okay, awesome. I'm sorry, how are you defining GPS? Or your 135, your, your business, business your one page oh, business okay. plan. So does anybody online, do you guys, have you done your GPS slash 135 for the year? Or does anybody have a clue what I'm talking about when I mention those names? Hmm. Maybe, no? Okay. So just gonna give you some ideas then. So here's what we're gonna talk about is social media. What are you doing in social media on a daily basis? Most of us can say, we probably jump on and scroll through some stuff, waste some time, and we're really not getting any engaging content. We might have a strategy where we're, you know, commenting on five people's posts, we're direct messaging people, um, doing birthdays, anniversaries, things like that on social media. So that's one aspect to go about. But I think the main and bigger point is how can we weave it in to what we're already doing? Because nobody wants to do more. Right? We want to do the least amount possible <laughs> for the best results. So instead of recreating the wheel, like I want to have what are my main priorities for this year? So I'm just going to make up one and you guys can chime in. So since we don't know what a GPS is, I'm just going to write it out really quick so that we can get a visual. So let's say, what's a goal? What was a goal that you guys have for this year? Anybody? How many houses? How many families served? Number 40 homes. 40 homes. Okay, and then I'm going to have three priorities. So what are those priorities going to be? I always just make it up that I tell people the number one should be database. It doesn't have to be. And yet I like always putting database. Number two can always be dependent. So this depends, are you growing a team? Are you not growing a team? Um, are you a solo agent trying to launch? Are you active in your community? There's lots of things that we could put here. Does anybody have a big priority that they're gonna be using in the next year? They might already be doing it, but also for next year. Trying to get off the ground, open houses. Open houses? Okay, what's another priority that somebody has for next year? Can you partners. Hmm? Partners. So is that a service for connecting with leads? It's a rental program. Gotcha. But it's early on in the lead generation. So you get a little renting on here. So Do you think that would be a priority or would that be a strategy? So that might be a under strategy. prospecting. Yeah. So we could just right prospecting okay and then could be something like home partners door knocking if you guys are into that um open houses this could be you know i'm sure you have a list of things we'll say circle prospecting oops can't spell on here yep. Database number one should be feed it. We want to feed our database, right? DTD2. DTD2 could be a strategy. Um, 
What are some other things? Great to find out what's the Sorry. Do the database too. It's calling all of your people in a certain. Um, oh, is that the? Right. Yes, I have that. I've just been going alphabetically. Though. Yeah, <laughs> it's like why am I doing this? Like so yeah. on on open houses, it's you know definitely the door knocking, mm -hmm. triple prospecting. <clears throat> um, we do open uh, Facebook ad or posts regarding the opens, mm -hmm. sending our database. All of the mm -hmm. flyers. Yeah. Okay. So, can everybody start to see how how are we going to sell forty homes next year? We're going to work our database. We're going to do a lot of open houses and do them very well. And then we're going to be prospecting too. It could be multiple different avenues, sure. but this could be just you know anybody's, <laughs> but the generic a little bit. So we start adding in what are the strategies that we're going to work. So I think on every one of these, when it's me, every one has social on it somewhere. So how am I working that into my system? So database, this is where you're coming um, with the five by five. So if we put socials under our database, then what is that strategy going to look like, right? We're going to talk about that. If I put socials under open house, what's that going to look like? And if I do the same with prospecting, how am I going to leave it? So there's lots of different ways to do this. Some people have a priority of just listing leverage. They leave it generic. What's the listing leverage? How are we going to get there by leveraging all of our listings? And so there's different ways that we can just keep filling in the blanks, yet we can make social media fit in every single one. So you're already doing it, right? You're already doing something towards your goal. And now we're just adding one more little layer on. So you're already using the best thing that you can do. So that just a quick breakdown of what a GPS is and how we can build one for everyone. Because as we go through this, we're going to talk more about it. So one sec. Okay. So lead gen strategies. So I think that there's lots of ways that we could be using this. This, what we're calling these lead gen strategies, can the, these priorities that are on here. So we're going to talk about how we can use social media and listing leverage, how we can use it at events for certain prospecting, open houses, community outreach and engagement, and for our database. So these, while we can use it in different aspects, absolutely, these are the most easy and engaging ways to start adding in social media. So I'm just looking at our participation online because. Are you going to send this out to us later? The, the slides, Kevin. Can we get the slides sent to us later? So, um. <laughs> no worries. Um. So we don't have great participation online. So I think that instead of I was going to have breakouts with you guys. Do you guys care if we just do it all as a group then together? Yeah. Okay. So we're brainstorming here. Maybe. Hold on. Let me flip. So we've got listing leverage. Does everybody know what that means? What listing leverage is? I know we're 27 days in, so I'm just. <laughs> no, no, no. You have the listing. Yeah. Well, yeah. How many, like, should we, I mean, in my mind, we are going through and every listing, I should be getting something else off of it, right? This should be creating. One to I don't, two pieces. One to two. I'd say at least two, but we'll start with one. <laughs> Let's just get one piece of this. How can we use our listing to get more business? So what are some ways that we're doing right now? Local prospect or knock in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, open house. And then uh, posted on social media. 
Yeah, we're mm -hmm. posting our open houses on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing videos through YouTube. Mm -hmm. Walk through videos. Yeah. So there's lots of ways that we can leverage our listings, right? So one of the best ways that I've ever heard um, was really going, and it's all door knocking. So I love door knocking. <laughs> People do not. Um, oh, as long as it's not hundred degrees. Well, okay. You know, we that, just got back into door knocking weather. Yes. We did. <laughs> That's right. We can't door knock all year round. Definitely not. I have tried that, and I'm like, ooh, five houses in, I'm a hot mess, and I'm like, I'm done. Like, yeah, yeah you're, you're standing there, the door gone. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, not good in professional looking. No. So <laughs> yeah, there's certain times a year that we door knock. I yep. should say that. So when we're doing this, the door knocking, I love when people go and um, so they door knock as soon as they get the listing, letting their neighbors know. They then door knock when they're doing an open house. Then they door knock when it goes under contract and then they door knock when it sells. Yes. It is the most consistent, if you do it consistently, way to get business because you are looking like the rock star, right? So most of the things we do for our listings, to be honest, it's not always for the seller. It's for another seller who we're showing off to of like, here's how great of a job that we do. And so by doing these things, definitely sets you apart. I want to just talk about real quick, how can we use that, the visuals, all of that for social media? So one of the things, if we're out door knocking, do not, I did see this one time, somebody was door knocking with a video camera pointed at the person at the door, never. But a good thing you can do while you're out door knocking, take a video of yourself. You're out there, you know, pounding the pavement, either you're searching for somebody for your buyer, you know, different things. Just take a quick live video. You can easily get out. You're already out there. You're already doing it. That means you probably already have a nice shirt on. You're ready to meet potential clients. So you're ready to be camera. So think about how can I utilize that door, during door knocking? Also a fun post with the door knocking is if you put your GPS tracker on, like your walking thing, you know, when you're tracking your steps and just posting what your route was after you're done. You're like, man, I just walked, you know, two miles for my buyer looking for a house. That is both in listing leverage and getting buyers, but it is, I don't like to say that I'm going door knocking to look for sellers. I'm always saying I'm going door knocking to look for a home for my buyer. So it depends on your strategy of what you're saying, yet, Build that in. Where did you just walk to? There's also a great app that I'm forgetting off the top of my head that marks every house that you went to. So you can store notes and sync with your database. But anyway, so that's something you do for door knocking. Calling, even if you are sitting, even if you love cold calling, maybe you don't love, it doesn't matter. Can you just post what you're doing for the day? Like that is a post in and of itself. Like here's what I'm doing. Yes, you can do that. Um, open houses, that's a whole can of worms, right? So we can do so much for open houses. So not only can we, you know, post pictures, I think a lot of people go with, here's just the photos of the house that were professionally done, which are all beautiful. That's great. That's a great way to post. That's one thing, right? Go to the house. If it's your listing or it's not your listing, it's your team's listing, whatever it might be, go to the house and take some of your favorite pictures. Like what is unique about the house? that you can create buzz around. So it doesn't have a nice wine cooler and you love one, talk about that. Does it have a beautiful backyard? Does it have no landscaping, which you love and you find a benefit, even though it might turn some people off? Like point out some things about that home while you're there. So if you're not comfortable on camera, as in video, just take snapshots of that. Doesn't matter, it does a little bit, but it still gets you to do it. So just do it, either photos or quick video, but that's always great. I also always love, doesn't matter if you're getting a professional walkthrough done, do your own. Go and do your own tour. Mm -hmm. So just taking your camera, it's gonna be sloppy, it's not gonna be yeah. perfect, doesn't matter. It is literally you just getting out there and creating content around that listing because not only is it gonna be for just the listing itself, It'll be used for your open house. You can post it in your Facebook event. You can post it on your page. But then let's say in this market, at least, you go and you have an open house this weekend. Pretty much, you know, it's gonna be sold. And so instead of just being like, oh, well, whoever came to the open house, that was great. I have those leads. 
keep posting the video on Sunday night. You know that the sellers aren't going to make a decision until Monday. Post that video tour that you did, or while you're still at the open house, post about it. Say, this one is about to go. We already have 10 offers on the table, and yet we would love to entertain a few more. Because, again, it's also setting us apart in the eyes of the seller. Like, we already have 10 offers on the table, and they are still out looking for the best buyer for you. That, again, it sets you apart. So think about those types of things. And then open houses, I love going live. You're there at the open house. You're doing a quick tour before anybody gets there. You're posting photos, definitely the events, things of that nature. I also like, I don't know, when you guys put out signs for open houses, I like always doing it in the morning. So I would just take pictures of myself putting out signs. Drawing traffic. That's how you do that. Oh, well, I never so actually put it up. Yeah, I, well, it could be a selfie. That's strict. I never did it alone. My husband always stopped. Okay. <laughs> so he goes out. There, took pictures yes. Anyway. <laughs> yes. So, you know, it depends. Um, but yeah, take it or just take a picture of your sign. Okay. Leading up to the home and say, everybody join me at, you know, two o'clock, whatever it might be. So make sure those strategies. And then when you were doing open houses on social media, a lot of times people just post the picture. Like, they make the banner at the top of the page like it's just one photo of the house. Is that or, a flyer, or a picture of our flyer? No, I it's not. Yeah. Nobody cares. It doesn't look good. Half of these photos from the front, I mean, if it's a good one, some of them look like a model home. I'm like, oh, so it's an open house in a model home. Like, what is it? Then some people also make the title like in person open house. And it's like, who cares? Who's going to click on that? So it's just get into the mind of your buyers and sellers. Yeah. What would make it in the basement? Come find it. You like, know? what would make you? Like, I used to do them a lot and have mimosas. And I would occasionally we'd get um, a guitarist to come in and just play music. So it would be mimosas and music. That's what we're doing. Or a Twilight open house. Can I put, I'm sorry, this is just me, alcohol in it, people show up. So I just want to collect sweets. Wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. I did boats and bubbly one time because it was on a canal home. Like, what can we do to set these apart? Even if it's uh, you know, a little exaggerated about how great that house is, but it's maybe, you know, and I like using the words, especially then, like, is it a cottage? Can we refer to a house as a cottage mm -hmm. instead of just the house? There are certain words we can describe things yeah. Key West style. You know, what type of canal home? If we're going to be describing the home, like what are those key words instead of you know, open house? <laughs> like just think about it. Have somebody else, even have your husband, your friend, coworkers, be like, would you click on this? <laughs> That's usually what it is. It's like, would you click on this to come to my open house? So think about what those things are because when we're doing these, we're already doing certain things in open houses, making an event. Just take it up one step, and that's where it's going to start setting you apart. Because I love open house events, any events, social media and events, I think is like the best thing because you get so much traction out of them. So definitely, I do an event for everything in life, I think, <laughs> because I want to make sure that there's something built around it and it's easy to lead generation right there. So those are some things that we can do just around the listing, not just posting. And I will say the other caveat. When you are posting your listing, if you're not that tech savvy, if you're not that great about posting on social media and uploading photos, and you're just like, I'm just going to post it from a link, please go to your website and post it. Like, get the link from your website. There are a lot of people in this office that I see posting Zillow, Zillow and Realtor.com and crazy like, for their listing. And I'm like, get it up there. Oh so I just know that there's people in this office that do that. So please don't go to your website. Everybody has a free command website that I believe Kevin probably sets up for you in the beginning. Go to your website, find the listing, share it from there. Do not go to Zillow and find your listing. <laughs> That's like the worst thing that we can be doing. Okay, so those were some ideas. So we've got around listing leverage. What, and we kind of covered open houses at the same time. That's good. 
let's talk events. So I'm not just, I'm not just meaning a Facebook event. Like what is an event? Do any of you guys, does anybody have events evolved in their business plan for next year? Do you plan to have events? Are you currently doing events? This is online too. Anybody doing events? Oh, we got it. <laughs> yep. Pints and pies. Pints and pies. You know what? That is so fantastic because I'm throwing one for a customer right now too. So we can go through what that looks like. What is the plan for when we're throwing an event? We're not getting into the nitty gritty of all the details, but what are we doing on social media with that? So social media for these events, for those of you who might be newer to real estate or newer to Keller Williams, we're big on events, I think, right? I think everybody wants to have them because it's easy lead generation. And I love to have them because it's free. Right? I get somebody else to pay for it. We have great sponsors, we have great vendors. I love working with great people. And it's their lead generation too. I put in the work for the event, they put in the money, we all come out happy because we have happy clients. So when we're doing events, it can be lots of things. Like if you guys are doing pints and pies, so pints and pies is really um, started off as just a Thanksgiving pie giveaway. And then all these microbreweries and breweries popped up. And I think it just evolved over the years where it's not just giving somebody a pie, not just having a pie event. Hey, we're going to give you a craft beer at the same time, right? And so it became ever more popular. And I think over the last like four years, it's really taken off. And nobody has a normal pie event anymore. They're going pints and pies. And we're charity at the same time. Yes. Right. Yeah. Three things. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, so we have pints and pies, which is a pie giveaway with your clients. You invite your whole database, you invite your clients, prospective clients, community members, whoever you deem to be invited. Then we have things like people do cookouts. People just rent a pavilion. They have burgers, hamburgers, whatever it is, and just get people together. Other people have, you know, cocktail hours. There's parties. There's, you know, I always like to think if you can focus it around a cause of some sort, more people come. So if you're doing uh, the pie giveaway, maybe you're doing the food drive at the same time, or you know, you're collecting, you're doing a bowling event and you're collecting things for kids because it's the start of the school year. But then there's the other type of events. And these are the ones that I also really like is reverse bold 100s. They are ever more popular. They're just all over the place. Yeah, well, I'm gonna explain what that is. <laughs> so a reverse bold 100, is really where, and I think they really got extra popular last year during COVID when we weren't meeting in person and we still had to talk to people. So a reverse bold 100 goes heavy on social media on those especially, but with those it's how can I get my phone to ring? So I'm tired of calling out to my database. How can I get my phone to ring? That's basically what it is. So you host a giveaway. And so the giveaway, you do a huge social media blitz just to get your phone to ring. It goes out to not just your database, everyone. That you put money behind, you get a sponsor involved, you give away a Peloton or a Yeti or uh, iPad, different things. But you give away something and it makes the phone ring. And basically you're just posting on social media about it and emailing your database away. So it's using those that can be less expensive, less work, yet they involve social media. So it's just thinking of how can, during the course of, you know, I just want to say a season of an event. So usually that lasts for two months. So we're thinking about the event, we're planning the event, we're executing on the event, and then there's post-event. What am I going to be doing on social media to make those events work? Who's got some ideas? Well, we're going to make it an event. Yeah. Yeah, and invite the ones people that we want to invite there. Yep, invite people for sure. Can we do a video? Mm -hmm. Like if we're having an event, and I'm just going to make believe that everyone's getting all of these sponsors. So I could, you know, if I'm in this office, I'm probably going to go out to that wall back there and pull in my sponsors and do a quick video. Am I doing the giveaway? Am I doing the pints and pies? If I'm doing pints and pies, I'll be honest, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to go have a beer and take a quick video that says we're having pints and pies, come join me. 
um, wander down there. So some invites are different, but you can do them right out on the 12th. You can go to the venue. So I'm just gonna say sponsor. So I also wanna to touch on why is it important to involve our sponsors? Cheaper. Cheaper, that's for sure. You also get their database. That's it. So if I am on here and Brian P. Forrester is sponsoring my pints and pies, and I do a video with Brian and I tag Brian, now who else is going to see my pints and pies event? All the Brian's people, right? So multiple sponsors is always good. That's definite. Can I get two people? Um, which is generally yes, because sometimes these events are expensive, getting more people split the cost evenly, and you're taking a certain portion to get I have a question because the events that we've done in the past have always been, you know, we rented a shelter at the park and we got this, that, and the other one to provide things, but we paid for it. So I'm and it's even <laughs> The sponsor video, do you usually have it like with the pints and pies? Would you have it at the uh, microbrewery yep. or? Okay. And what benefit would you say to them? You're providing the pies and they're providing the, the pies? I don't even get that far in. I'm like, hey, do you want to do a pints and pie event together? Mm -hmm. And we try to get two or three people and then we cut the cross in the thirds. Two or three people meaning sponsors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, or they may just buy all the pies. And then we'll take care of the pints or mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah. So we always have two or somebody, three. Yeah. You never take their money. You make them pay something. <laughs> Correct. You're not allowed to take their money. Yeah. They just oh, okay. pay for something. They buy the pies. Yeah. They buy the pies or pick up the bar tab or yeah. whatever it might be. Or sometimes there's decoration. Usually those smaller things I keep for myself because if there's things you actually have to pick up, like in terms of like, are you going to get flowers? Is there a sign you need to be made? Those little ancillary costs that add up. Those are what I try to keep with team members to do. But it just goes to, it also, if we, okay, so you guys have a great relationship, I'm sure, with all of your sponsors. So what about newer people, right? How do we get who might not have those? So we can just add in benefits. So you're going to get everybody. So, you know, Mr. Lender, you're going to get everybody that comes to the event. You can set up a table at the event. Uh, you can be, yeah, all of those great things. Here's what you're going to get. So you can make a list of what you could offer back, especially if you don't have like never done a deal with me. Yeah, that could be the case of never done doing a deal with somebody going to get involved in that. And I would say most companies are very open to sponsors, yeah. to parties. You know, it's very really, open. it's really funny around here. Pretty much everybody does. Like I literally think everybody in the state of Florida will sponsor something. You go to somewhere else, like I was doing find some pies. Um, for a team up in uh, Pennsylvania. And they got the sponsors, they got the money, wasn't a problem about the money. They would not be on video. They did not want their logo on anything. They were set in their mindset that the agent, other agents in the office, wouldn't like that they were sponsoring somebody's event. So anyway, different cultures in different areas were like, oh, you sponsored him? Now I'm gonna ask you to sponsor mine. <laughs> because, you know, our mentality more around here. So it is great. So that's why we want to get those sponsor videos for sure. It is getting all of their data. And if we're going to tag in that charity, yep. which I think we should yep. do on all events, yep. that charity video, oh, that one, that's your best video. <laughs> um, because you start getting donations from people that aren't even coming to the event. Today. So that's really nice. Um, building your database. I think all of us should be giving back all the time. Um, or not all the time, but at some points throughout the year. So if you can use the charities because you're bringing awareness to their cost and they're bringing awareness to you, it's getting to a lot more people. So definitely when we're doing it. Can't I, receive if you don't give. Yep, there we go. And if we have, we're doing some videos. I also like posting in my event. So when people make events, a lot of times, on social media, they're just then posting on their page. And there's no discussion, there's not much happening within the event itself. I like posting within the event. There's something called discussion, post. So don't just make it and then walk away from the event after you invite some people. I go ahead and I take the sponsor videos, the charity videos, the pictures, whatever I'm doing, I go ahead and I post it in the event. 
I post it on my business page, and then sometimes I'll even post it online or I'll share it, like onto my first one. Mm -hmm. So just reusing the content because this type of content, like when we think about it, is the best for Facebook because it's original. You are creating this content, nobody else has it. I love doing things like you know, sharing the Keeping Current Matters blogs and things like that, because I think they're informational, most of them. But it really comes down to, that doesn't get me anywhere with Facebook itself. It might get me, you know, people reading it, informed, but this type of content gets me out there to more people than would normally see it. So think about those charity videos. So it's also like countdown. I love a good countdown, five days till the event, three days till the event, and it's just one graphic. And I know you guys are probably in command, and maybe has the function, but if not, just start a Canva account. It's free and you can create those countdowns. You can create all these graphics in like two seconds without having to think about it, without having to get a designer, nothing. And they have free pictures in there. Some of them cost money if you don't have the paid account, but there's a ton of free things. So if I need Heinz and Pies picture, boom, I could go right there. So just something to think about when we need to create what was that content. website again? Canva. Canva.com. Yep. It's actually what they um not built, I shouldn't say built commands designs off of, but that's where the inspo came from. What's from Canva? So yeah, events. Then what am I gonna do? This is all leading up. You know, I'm sure I have other plans. I'm calling people and texting them, whatever. But these things are driving it to people I don't know. And that's really what I want. But what am I going to do at the event? Video or live event. Video, live. Do I have a contest sure. going at the event? Maybe. Not everybody likes those. I get it. So you don't have to. But if you are, who's going to be the winner? Right? If you're doing, like we talked about before, a reverse old 100, and you're getting all these people to come in, they're submitting their information. The next day you're pulling the winner, right? That is a moment. You're already doing it. Again, this is we're already doing these things. Just break out your phone or have somebody designated on your team to break out the phone to capture it so you can post it. That's really what we want to be thinking about. So during, and then what about post event? So what, how much you raised or what you raised, mm -hmm. you know, the winners of the event, mm -hmm. definitely thank you and photos mm -hmm. of, of people having fun. Yes. And your sponsors. Yep. Thank you. Sponsors and all of these things, right? You're probably doing them anyway, right? You're sending an email, post event, your post event recap of like, thanks everybody for coming, blah, blah, blah. It's just taking it one step further mm -hmm. and putting it on social media. That's really what it's about is what's the next layer that we can add on. So definitely thinking about post event. And then here's one, not a lot of people do it, but I think there's great results because I've had them, is who didn't come to your event that your Facebook friends did? So I would say the event, like the during, um, the event itself is the least important part of this whole thing. Doesn't matter if anybody should. Matters a little bit because you want to get some pictures, right? Yeah, but it really doesn't that. matter who shows up. It's the phone calls and all of the lead gen you did before that that is the purpose of the event. So it's also post event. So you have those conversations. You're likely sending note cards after thanking everybody for coming. I always like to say thanks for coming. This is to either side. So we have, did you come to my event? You're either sending a note card or you're going to take a video and you are going to send it in Facebook Messenger to all of the people, or if you're more of an Instagram person, that's cool too, to all of the people that came thanking them. Then what are you gonna do to the other side? You know what, we didn't get to connect, but I would love to buy you a cup of coffee anyway. When's a good time to do that? Taking a video, using our social media channels to get it out to them is another post-event idea that you can be doing. And then 
let's talk about what's community outreach. So some people don't get this word. I probably made this up myself of what I define it as. But what do you guys think community outreach might mean for our businesses as the lead generator? To me, it's more branding and, and being seen a lot. <laughs> yeah, so it can be many things, right? So it can be branding, it can be seen, it can be, hey, this is my restaurant I go to every Friday night and I know all of the staff and here's who I get to know and everybody just knows me here. It could be also, I lump in community outreach. Am I doing local charity? So charity work can definitely be, I'm just going to say charity. Am I sitting on any boards? Yeah. Like, yeah, PTA, it could be, you know, the art council. Like, am I sitting on anything? Am I involved? So I'm just going to say boards. And then it's also thing like, do I have B&I? Am I part of Toastmasters? Um, what's the other one? Keeping local or something like that. There's a lot of them. Right? Like, am I part of an organization? What's the other ways that we could do community outreach? Volunteer work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, I'm just going to put sports. Yeah, like cleanup programs. You know, we went down to the, the causeway or, or yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So we should also think about businesses. That's my favorite. <laughs> so when I do this, um, I'm part of a board, I'm part of other organizations, not in sports. My kids are basically out of high school, so that doesn't matter. So for me, it's businesses. And again, why do I love businesses? They get their database too, that's why. So doing businesses, doing business spotlights, whether it starts here in the office, whether it's in your local downtown, what's what's in your area? What's your favorite pizza shop to go to? Like literally you could do a business spotlight on your local pizza shop. It can be as comprehensive of you interviewing the owner. Why'd you start it? Love it, whatever. It could be as small as you're taking a nice looking photo, it doesn't have to be perfect, of the pizza, just saying you're there, shop local, you know, whatever it might be. It can be that small. What are you doing in your daily lives that you can post on social media? And it's when you're tagging a business. I know because I, I have a new favorite piece of place where I brought it up. But when I posted about it, they reshared it because I posted about their business. So it's where can you get these reshares? Where can you get this engagement from? Um, I don't know. He made the cannoli cake for my wedding. Um, he owns the Anytime Fitness. It's down on uh, next to Ozona now. He owns Anytime Fitness. Ozona Boy, are those, uh, no, so uh, Chef. It's not DiGiorno. It's DiGiorno's, <laughs> fresh. Yeah. yeah, it used to be the Rusty something, or it used to be a weird name, little place. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Oh, yeah. You've gone there recently? Yes, I smelled it. Store of, of, of so you must like New York pizza. <laughs> yeah. It's Italian. It's good sauce. Right, you go there. Anyway, so it's about how can we get business involved with what we're doing. And that's when a small business, even larger businesses, get tagged on social media, their people are trained to share it back. So they love, like, if you got tagged by, you know, the pizza shop that you came in and they were so happy that you were back there as a client, you'd be excited about that, right? You'd be like, oh, they tagged me, maybe, right? Um, most, if they tagged your realtor page, yes. you'd be like, that's what I mean. What about a dentist? Um, yeah. yeah. You know what? It's, don't people well, live here and need it? To just in there with a news he gets I would try not to do bad reviews. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I would do positives. There's enough so bad stuff. My teeth work now or whatever. <laughs> no, because aren't your clients looking? Right? Everybody's supposed to. We go into Palm Harbor happenings. For those of you that yep. live in Palm Harbor, everyone's asking for everything. 
So if you have a resource that you can make something with, either put it on your website, doesn't matter, just posting about them. I was toying with this idea, which I actually started, but it was askatisa.com. And it was a directory of every business I could think of with a video connected with it. So how could you get your clients' information? So when you're doing these business spotlights, you're sharing them on Facebook. Doesn't matter if it's a picture, video's great, but if you're not ready for that, that's okay too. So how can we move that these businesses, so what's a business you can think of right now that you would want to spotlight? The dentist. The dentist. Yeah, why not? Anybody else? Three grand there. I think uh, I should get my money at it. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll give you one. New person, right? They're new into real estate. How many lenders do you know? One. Which lender is that? Van Dyke. Great. So I don't know which guy Van Dyke you're Kurt. using. Kurt. Kurt's a great example. Take Kurt down to the conference room and ask him lender questions. Why is he in the business? Then you can start a whole series with them of shooting videos. Kurt loves doing videos. You can literally go do that without even leaving the building. And that's your first business spotlight. Or it can be a picture of you and Kurt standing outside the office, just saying, man, I just learned so much about mortgage. This is my new go-to guy. Post his information right there. Same thing with, do we still have Jason in the office? Yes. Insurance. I bet you probably have, or will have a million questions about insurance, right? So you're like, well, what is flood insurance? And how do I get it quoted? Can I get sinkhole insurance on this house? There could be a million things. You just learned so much from Jason for having a 10 minute conversation with him. He's your now go to guy, right? There's what other star title? There's uh, the doctor next door. It really doesn't matter as long as you can build some type of relationship with them. So, those are some first ideas. Use the vendors, get a transaction coordinator. Do you have one of those yet? Transaction coordinator, who are you going to talk to about when you get something under contract? Thinking about who's that going to be, meeting them, introducing them on your Facebook page because they're who your clients are going to be talking to. Yeah, so thinking about all of those, or if you're like, man, I love this cigar shop in Target. I want to go there and I'm just going to spot like that. It doesn't really matter. We can do it at a park, we can do spotlights on just areas, wall springs, climb to the top of the tower. Take some pictures. Lovely day walk. Because now it's a lovely day for a walk. Probably <laughs> it hasn't been, but uh, now we can start spotlighting different areas. So you're going to go to Felipe Park and catch the sunrise. Any of these things that we're already doing, what are you doing every single day on the weekends? Are you commuting to work? Did you get here before anybody else? And you saw the red sign glowing on the, uh, you know, wall saying, "Man, I'm here early." I'm so excited to work for my boss. Like, it's just, what are you doing? And I'll tell you, a lot of people start this and they don't post anything. And for about the first week, it's okay. You're a little nervous. You're like, so a lot of things to put out there. I don't know if it's good enough. Do you ever just go on Facebook? I don't know if you guys do. And you're just scrolling. That's fine. Then all of a sudden something makes you stop. You might get scrolled past for a long time. You might not stick out, but just know everyone else is putting themselves out. You have to be vulnerable to be on social media. You don't have to post personal things, but even like I've done it before, I've taken a picture of a sunrise and I'm like, is this even good enough to post? It's a beautiful sunrise over the water. Everything's good enough to post in my mind, right? Because we live in Florida. We have the most interesting jobs when it comes to social media in terms of diversity. Can I take photos when I'm at an inspection? Can I add those to my story? Can I take photos of my photographer taking photos of my listing and post them. Yeah, behind the scenes tour. What's my stager doing? Am I gonna document that? Most likely. So it's just, what am I already doing every single day that we can build it out of? That makes sense, guys? Yeah. How we can use all of our community right now. Like you are in a class, let's just stop for a second. That's a great point that I'm just going to make to myself. You are in a class learning about how to better yourselves to serve your clients. Who's posting about it? Kevin taking pictures. 
but you know, and it's not this, it could be any class. It could be literally, man, I'm so inspired by the mission that's stated on our wall. I'm so glad I came into training today. It doesn't have to be that complex. You'd be like, there's this new painting in here. And funny story, it was created a couple of years ago at, not I forget if it was May Camp or Family Reunion, whatever. Well, Gary Keller was um, talking, there's an artist painting all of these things and blah, blah, blah. Like, could you make up a story? Wow, we're already doing sleep in heavenly peace again. <laughs> this is great. Who's going to join me for volunteering? Like in this room, I feel like there's like 10 posts that can be made right now of just what we're already doing. So, last but not least, likely the most important, database. Who's using social media? Yeah. There's a comment in the chat. Oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. So it says uh, regarding free paid stock photos on Canva, wanted to holler out some great sites with free photos. Awesome. Did they share a link? Pixels and on. on Unsplash. Yeah, fix a day. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Alexis. So, how are we going to use social media with our database? Oh, I got something covering my screen. Cool. Who's got any ideas? Smart plans, do they do that? Too much work. Smart plans. It's like, oh my God. Okay, let's take the stress out. I'm not talking about smart plans because that can be a stressor and trigger for people here. Um, but what's another one? So I'm thinking my number one, my easiest go to is birthdays. Birthdays. How are we communicating? And I'm just also going to give this caveat if it's a friend. Like a real friend, you don't just call her social media. <laughs> wish them happy birthday. Uh, like I wished Kevin happy birthday over the weekend on his phone because I knew he was not going to be on social media. So making sure we're actually reaching out to people that are important. So birthdays, what can I do around a birthday? I see a lot of people do it. You just go on happy birthday, happy birthday. In the long thread, do you think most people read them? I'm just going to go with no. They don't. So I did. <laughs> add gifts or memes. You can add gifts. You can add memes. You can also send the message directly to them, right? So you can do it in Messenger. I like to just go onto their page, not go into the trail. So you're actually posting on their page. You're not posting in their birthday message. So Facebook likes to trick you. And they like to give you in your notifications it's X, Y, and Z's birthday. Wish them a birthday message. And it has like five people for the day because all those people have birthdays and just right. It's just getting lost in the ether of the 150 other messages you may get. If you go to that person's page and you actually post something on there, they are much more likely to see it and their friends are seeing it. The second way, post it on your page. Do you have a picture with that person? That's the best way. Tag them on your post. Say happy birthday. Love spending time with you. Blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, maybe for an actual friend if you have photos with all those people. And then the other thing is when we're giving them this message, I never just say, you know, happy birthday, Kevin. That's not what's going to go on social media. What's going to go on social media, happy birthday, Kevin. I hope you have a great day. What are you doing to make today extra special? My, res <laughs> my response rate to that message is probably about 75% that people actually reply back. So the whole point of this is engagement, right? Like we want engagement, which then we could turn into sales later on, blah, blah, blah. but it's getting people to interact with us. So if you're asking a question, you're more likely to get a response than if you're just saying happy birthday. Does that make sense? So messaging, direct. Okay. How else can we interact with our database on Facebook? Anniversaries. 
anniversaries. Oh, babies mm -hmm. born. Like the grand. Yeah. Yep. So another one that I just like is I think this is I'm all about time blocking. So I like things to be done timely, or else I'm just going to get lost forever on Facebook looking at cat videos. I'll be honest. So what can I do? I need 20 minutes of my time. What can I do in 20 minutes on Facebook every day that's focused on these people? My database is a gold mine. We all know that. So what am I going to do if I could make a list of the top five things that I could do in 20 minutes? So my number one is, yes, I'm going to check those birthdays, right? So I'm going to make sure that happens. Number two, I need to comment on something. Going through, and I'm sure we're all um, doing this, you might scroll, you might like something, or you might laugh at something, or you might do something. But how often are you really writing comments? I'm going to say probably not that often. Not at all. And so, especially if you have your daily segment. So we were talking VPP2 earlier. Some people have it listed, you know, their A's, B's, and C's. Who are those people? Who are you likely to get business from? And who do you want to nurture relationships with so that you could potentially get it from? So if we have those, let's say I'm going through my DTB2 schedule. I shouldn't use that word, it's just making people. I'm going through my databases. <laughs> Um, who's my VIP? I'm supposed to call them this week because I'm inviting them to another event or whatever I'm doing. I'm going to take those people and I'll probably break them out like, oh yeah, here's, you know, my A's that I need to do. And they're my VIP. So this is not hundreds of people that I'm talking like, you're going to have a couple. Go comment. Mm -hmm. Who are your VIPs? And comment. So if you can accomplish getting five code, sorry, five comments in a day. Some of them can be short, some of them can be long. Comment, don't just like. And then number three, I would definitely say um, going through and doing, I wrote that the wrong way, but uh, five direct messages. I'm pretty sure all of us have pretty large databases in Facebook, right? You can have thousands of people, hundreds at least, most of us are going to have. Um, most of us have in the high thousands. Who could you direct a message? Because we have our database. All of the people in Facebook might not be in our database. So this is part of feeding our database. Man, you know, we're connected on Facebook. And I realize I'm not quite sure what you did or what your goals in life are. Use the board conversation. Say, like, I don't know what you're doing. I wonder what you like because you came up in a conversation or I was scrolling through and I noticed you did X, Y, and Z. You're out skiing in Tahoe this weekend. Like, man, I love Tahoe. Did you eat at any great restaurants? Because I'm planning a trip next year with the family. Who can we have conversations with? But technically they are organic. Even though you're making a schedule for when you're going in and doing this, these can still be organic conversations. And writing a one sentence or a two sentence message to somebody on Facebook can be accomplished very easily. Again, it's setting that timer and setting the time block so you're not in here for hours doing it. And then I also make one for colleagues. So if I have agents, I have a lot of agents in my Facebook database, I send them messages, one hand message. Hey, how are you doing? How's the market where you're at? That one's pink. That one I copy and paste. Keep a little notes on my computer. I copy and paste that all day long to people so they remember that I'm here for their referrals. So there's different ways, direct messages, and then I'm going to say referrals. And then I like the anniversary. And so I kind of categorize that in a few different ways. Because if you are, if, when you start doing this, taking a picture to close it, you were at their inspection. Could you post it and be like, oh my gosh, remember the shared memory? You're going to start getting more and more shared memories. And if you're using it for your clients in terms of 
taking inspection photos, the house that they just moved in here into, um, whatever was happening during the transaction, maybe they were with the lender. Any of those things are moments. And so whether it's a true house anniversary, whatever it might be, posting that on social media. If you have wedding anniversaries or couple anniversaries or anything like that, so a lot of people capture them. And the really great thing is not just using social media, that's when you pick up the phone for. for. So literally you can do it. Actually, I don't know if you can do it in command. You can do it in most databases or, or CRMs. You can set a reminder five days before. And when you're setting a reminder for yourself five days before somebody's anniversary for their wedding or you know partnership or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So if I'm getting a task five days, who what am I getting that task for? Why would I set myself a task five days before somebody's anniversary? Uh, congratulate them early. So I'm calling the husband. <laughs> yeah, or that should. Or I'm calling the wife if she's the driver of the relationship. Who's going to be most likely to forget? Give the call. Be like, man, I saw it's coming up on your anniversary. What do you guys got planned for it? And literally, it can help jog their memory. And they will then, not kidding, how many conversations have been like, man, I don't even have anything planned yet. Man, I've got an in at this really great Italian restaurant down in the zone of blue. You know, we make your reservation. Do you have a babysitter? Because I've got X, Y, and Z down the street who usually does that for my family. Like, how can you use those conversations to be organic and giving instead of, hey, who wants to buy a seller of best real estate? Nobody wants to make that call. It's the most boring call they'll ever make in their life. So how can we make them better? So that's an offshoot that's not really Facebook. Yet. Just had to say that. So these are the things that we can be focusing on in 20 minutes if we time block it. Can you get here at 8 or wherever your desk is located and do it from 8 to 8.30? Do not wake up until 10 o'clock and you want to do it from 11 to 11.30. It doesn't matter. But if we start blocking out where we can be purposeful in our social media, we're just going to get better. And literally, if you did nothing else, doing this 20 minutes a day is going to get you interaction back from your database. Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, I think that's all I got for you. So now I'm going to ask, what are your takeaways? What are you going to implement? What questions do you guys still have? And this goes for online as well. We would love to hear from you guys on any takeaways, what you're going to implement. Anything like that? I love, like I said earlier, we, I have the 555 on, and I just started that um, from a meeting we had last week training. And why I didn't do that, I don't know, because a lot of my clients want to be talked to or communicated through Facebook, not phone calls, not emails. Mm -hmm. So you have to find out where do your people want to talk. Yeah. And they feel more comfortable in, in engaging in Facebook yeah. than it is co calls. So have I been calling in for three years and it not matching? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, where is my people? They're on Facebook. Therefore, I need to match on their level on Facebook and not these code calls. Yeah. And I mean, that's a great point because you could start doing like that works for your business. Oh, yeah. Correct. Not everyone. But not everyone. Yeah. But it's finding out what does. Yeah. Because some people might be sending, you know, Facebook messages and never getting a response. Okay, try a different strategy. So I like that you're pivoting what you've been doing. And it's seeing what's going to work. It's the same time when we talk about like, when's the best time to post? Don't know. It's your audience. Yeah, exactly. We have to do different things and see which one works. So that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I realize I have to sync up my database more with my, <clears throat> with Facebook because they're like two separate entities right now. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily have everybody in my database on Facebook. Yeah. So pay some attention to that, but I, I like all the videos and the, the various things around the events. And mm -hmm. yeah. What you're already doing. Yeah, definitely. You mean takeaways? Yeah, I'll be a page and a half, two pages. Okay. Things that I'm just- I was thinking, I don't know if no it idea. would be good. It was, I was just brainstorming of you know, doing a, a joke a week or a meme or a video a week maybe real estate related since I'm in that business. Yeah. Or just just knowing something on a Consistent. routine. Consistent. Not every day, that's too much. Yeah, no, that's too much for most people. Right. But like what I like to do Joke is come up with a hashtag for each day. It helps me relate to it. So it's like winning Wednesdays, touring Tuesdays, 
if you're going on a house tour and you're seeing something, market Mondays, you're interviewing with a lender, um, follow me Fridays, uh, there's a million of them. Like you just, you can come up with whatever, but you know, joke Thursdays could be your day right. and posting it. Yes. Because if we, right. If you add in one for every day, you're never going to do it. Yeah. Um, but if you have like Thursday's my day to post yeah. and make something very unique to me, then absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Or some people do. Uh, I think it's hilarious. Yes. It runs some few gray lines, taking pictures off of the MLS of very bad bathrooms. Um, and they have their, their back. It's, uh, I know, but I remember it. It's one of those things. <laughs> I remember seeing it. Um, so some people just pick a theme and do that one day a week. Absolutely. That's a great idea. I was doing weird and wonderful for a while. Oh. You know, like a wooden bathtub. Hand yeah. Wooden bathtub, all these unusual things. Yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I just, it just dropped out. So I have to put that back. Yeah. <laughs> But no, yeah, theming a day mm -hmm. makes it consistent. Mm -hmm. People will start watching for it and they'll start associating you with it too. Yeah. That's what's important. What about anybody online? Do you guys have any takeaways? Can't, I can't talk. Takeaways you want to share with the group? Donna? Cheryl. Oh, I'll let the other one go first. Donna, we can't hear you. No, I think that was Alexis trying to talk. Oh, I see Donna's mouth moving. <laughs> Um, I, I was going to say doing the videos while you're actually doing things for the clients, like door knocking or, you know, whatever creative activity you're doing and actually videoing yourself doing it. That was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Just that layer. Alexis, what did you have? Yeah. My biggest takeaway is this big reminder that uh, big reminder about moments that lots of things my agent, I'm an admin assistant, lots of things that my agent does that's like second nature to him, we forget can be a moment, can be turned into 10 posts, like you said. So um, yeah, just being reminded that there are lots of opportunities to create content. Awesome. Yeah, I feel inspired. So thank you. Well, good. So we should do a follow-up and see what everybody implemented after that. Okay, I'll be on November 17th at 4 o'clock. Oh, uh, Kevin already has a plan to <laughs> Anybody else from online have anything that they want to talk about? Hey, Tisa asked the question, how do people feel about making videos? What is their comfort level? Oh, that's a great question. Kevin just said in the room, what is everybody's comfort level of making videos? Feel like this. When you're out in the field or when you're just standing there. I like doing them as long as I'm not in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about anybody else? Who's doing She's videos? And are you comfortable? Yeah, so do you think you could maybe do a class on actually using the, the platforms and how they work together or, you know, just how, how to just, I know it gets really deep, but just how to touch on posting those videos and where to share them and how they work with Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and TikTok. <laughs> yep, yeah. I think Kevin's already got it booked. Really? He's yelling at the back of the room, but yes. So yeah, I I actually just did my first, uh, I guess it was a video and I'm not, I should be better, but I'm not very good at like the Instagram, like reels and all that stuff. I don't really know how it works. So I just played with it until I got it. And I finally made my first video, um, just on a walkthrough at open house, you know, saying, you know, here's my walkthrough of this open house. And it actually got just a lot of like, outside, you know, views and things yeah. like that. And I think I even picked up a few more first. So I just say like best advice is probably just, just go for it. Just, just try it or like keep playing with it until you, you figure it out. No. Yeah. I, I had an agent who was very much wanted to do live. And I said, why don't you just shoot a video first? He'd never shot one video in his life. And now he all of a sudden wants to go live. So my advice to him was, why don't you just shoot a video first? Why don't we step into it? No, he didn't. He went and just straight did a live. He was completely upside down while doing the live. That post got so many darn comments. Um, talking to him, engaging with him, laughing with him, because he was also like, I don't know what I'm doing. So anyway, I love that advice, Shauna, is just do it because nobody's perfect. They actually like us to see mistakes a little bit. I was shooting a video for somebody the other day 
And I think that I was there for like an hour and a half shooting one 30 second video because my advice to them was, it doesn't matter. You're not watching it. Once I shoot it, you're not allowed to see it um, because people also often don't post after they look at their own videos. So it was just do it. And if people, if they were hired clients, so I couldn't just say, no, we're using it. But to you guys, I should say, just do it. Just put it out there. It doesn't matter if your lighting's not perfect. Do say, for those of you on video, don't have the camera like this. Reach your arms out. <laughs> That's my one tip. Um, I don't want to look up your nose. Um, but other than that, it's just do it and see what happens. Because a lot of great things, there's more great things that'll happen than bad things that'll happen. Most of the time, there's nothing bad that'll happen. Can you tell them what will the video class be? Remember if I don't be in person only? Oh, yeah. And the video class is in person only in November. Great point there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so good, good point there. Tisa, I want to know how your um, Ask Tisa series went. Did you get business from that? No, I never finished. Yeah, I, yeah. No, sure. it's still part of. I was out for three months for COVID stuff. So I just oh. kind of have a stop gap and now I need to, you know. Okay. Anyway, get back on the train that I was going with it. I got you. So, so it's yeah. mostly just getting your face out there doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, does anybody else have any takeaways they want to chat about with us before we log off? No, we're all good. Well, I hope you guys learned things. I feel you did because most Thank people you. commented back. Yes. So I appreciate it. And we will be back together soon, guys. Bye. Great job.